to 5 o'clock. Okay, we're live. We're live? We're live. So we're almost, almost on time. Well, uh, we're, Do you like, like my new metrics? We're almost pretty late, is how I think of it. Almost pretty late. Yes. Almost okay, so you go late. the other way around. Yeah. I'm the optimist. So yeah, I consider, like, if, we're, if we start at, like, 4.35 to 4.45, I consider that a little late. A little late. Yeah, and then if we start from anywhere from kind of 4.45 to 5 o'clock, that's, like, really late. And then after five o'clock is like something so we're must, really late. Something was on fire. No, no, it's we're 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 late, but we're not really late. But it's four fifty. Oh yeah, okay, yes, I would consider that really late. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but like, yeah. and then like after five is just like unless something was on fire, there isn't really much of an excuse. I mean, there still isn't an excuse. Um, so yours is based on lateness. Mine yes. is based on on timeness. Yeah. So I, I my my Which almost is really on the time. same thing. Yeah. It's like saying, uh, it's like the like, oh, oh yes, I'm, I'm 25 years young. Like, yeah, so you're that guy. Except, yeah, in that situation, I'm not, I guess. So maybe I should be your guy. Because <laughs> I hate that. So that's we're like, really late. That's like measuring phones in millimeters thin. Yeah. Oh. See, this, you're the marketing guy. At the end of all that, it oh. turns out you were like the marketing executive. Oh. Wow. That's the worst. I never even realized. You that were such an worst. effective marketing executive. That you didn't even know. I didn't even realize you what you've been doing I, all this time. I, I planted my phones in your ad spots for $300,000 in, wow. in your show. I mean. Yeah, why don't, we, why don't we get into what topics we have today? Good thinking. Just do it, man. So OnePlus apparently paid $300,000 US dollars. And you know what? This is actually in as a rapid fire topic, but I have a lot to say about this. Sure. $300,000 US dollars to get their phones featured in House of Cards. Yep. Um... What else do we have here? Uh, Google releases Android N details. I'm N. gonna have to say it like that. N details, because that doesn't but really sound like maybe M. Maybe you're not M. super sure M. about the like M. micro parts of the uh, words M. The micro parts just, of the words. I was finding you... excuses to say M. What is a mi oh. <laughs> micro McDonald's? parts is the closest <laughs> <laughs> you can get to a sensible thing with an M in it? <laughs> well, it, was, it had to fit that part of the sentence. Why don't you come up with a with a mick? <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh that's terrible manis vr gloves manis <laughs> it works yeah. what else do we have do we have any other topics samsung and, and microsoft announces closure of lionhead studios ceases development on latest fable game which isn't funny no actually that's pretty lame imagine nike bought microsoft and then renamed them microsoft I like Mikey better. Mike. <laughs> Mikey. <laughs> Let's roll the intro. It would be like Mike. Get it? It would actually make sense for Mikey. Like Mikey, just poo it. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be just like a oh, great no. tagline for a laxative company? Oh my god, someone should do that. Just poo it. I wonder if Mikey would see Probably. <laughs> Probably pretty hard. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, you could make the argument that it is not Nike's trademark. But, I mean, I don't think... But I think that would be, like, the Model 3 thing. Yeah, that might be one of those things where Nike would kind of be like, yo, here's a letter that's, like, super friendly, but also super had 16 lawyers writing it. <laughs> You guys should probably change your slogan <laughs> because you can't afford to go to court with us for this long. <laughs> yes. Yes. Apparently it's we uh, Shia LaBeouf's day. trademark. No, actually it isn't. He says, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, he does say just do it. I thought he sometimes didn't say just, though. Do he, it. he mixed it up a little bit, right? Don't let your dreams be dreams. I don't know if that's oh, what that clip is so it. awful. Like I, I actually never did figure out what the story behind it was. If, if did it you ever watch the full thing, intentionally bad. I don't know. It was really weird. Everyone like because everyone's like, oh, Shia LaBeouf's like super motivational speech. So I was like, okay, and I watched it, and he was just like screaming, "Do it!" And I was like, uh, okay. No, I did. So, no, I watched did it. Did you watch the long one? There's a long one. There, there's like longer there, than a few minutes. Oh yeah, it's like half an hour. What? Yeah. 
You watched that for half an hour? I was... I can't watch Shia LaBeouf for half an hour in Fury. I think... <laughs> Never mind standing in front of a green screen screaming at me. I think I was, like, scripting something, and I had it on the background because I was trying to figure out what it even was. Gross. And it, like, I never understood. At no point in time did I understand. I think it, it felt like he was doing, like, auditioning takes for, like, different, like, styles of himself, I guess is what I'd say. A whole bunch of people were saying it was an art project, and I was like, when does something go from insanity to an art project? Well, or are they the same thing? I don't I know. Think. There was your Scrapyard Wars computer. That was pretty freaking cool. Okay, was it so, cool? So, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't want to say too much. I got we a thumbs up. We don't want to say too much. We don't want to say too much. So, I got what up. I will say is I got this. two thumbs up. I've got, I've got people asking me and already, when is... Scrapyard Wars going to be released because Friday. No, I'm the marketing guy. <laughs> You're the crappy marketing guy. It's like just poo it on Friday. <laughs> Not Friday. toilets half full. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not Friday at all. Um. So no, not Friday. It will be on a Saturday. But Ed respectfully <laughs> yeah, requested an additional week. <laughs> which is good. Which is good. You want that, actually. Because we are doing this one really differently. So Scrapyard Wars 1 was three parts, with the last part being primarily benchmarking slash judging, and the first two being us running around getting stuff. Yeah. Scrapyard Wars 2, which was the um, water cooling one, was... I forget. Okay, Scrapyard Wars 3 with Austin was a three-way battle, and that ended up being a challenge for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one was with three teams, it was just so much footage. For one person to have to scrub through. For one person to no get through. There was no editor or anything. And the other issue was that it made it really hard to track what was going on because there were these three different storylines where the time of day, you can't necessarily go, okay, it's 10 o'clock. Let's check in with what this team and this team are doing. Here's our 10 yeah. o'clock update. It doesn't yeah. really work that way because at 10 o'clock, he might be sitting picking his toes and I might be out in a car and Austin might be doing something else. Or we might all be sitting picking our toes. Like you can't... Or we're all doing something too insane to be covered in a short segment or like it, it, it's just never really going to make a ton of sense. So it was really hard to tell the story. So Scrapyard War Season 4... I think Luke and I, not I think, we talked about it already, are 100% in agreement. Oh, it's the best one. It's going to be the best one. It is the best one. Two teams. Two teams, but we've got, it's a team battle. So it's um, me and one of the BS Mods guys, Luke and the other BS Mods guys. So we've got actual professional case modders this time yep. helping us with it. The scoring is going to be done a little differently. It's not going to be just performance. And the filming was different, too. So we filmed almost the entire time. Like, my camera was probably rolling a good 60% of the time. Brandon, you think that's about right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if ours was. So there's a lot of footage. I mean, was he rolling for even 40% of the time? We did a lot of retakes. Oh. He would well. not be rolling, and then we'd say something. Oh, well, we had to do a fair bit of that, too. Redo it. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, of course. I mean, it is what it is. It's it's capturing the moment as best you Ed's, can. Ed is really good at, like, being completely not noticeable when he's filming. So, like, I don't know how much he filmed. Okay, I realized enough. in one of the stores he had the camera, like, in his elbow. <laughs> and it was actually running. Like, he, he he's just able to, like... He's kind of ninja. Yeah. So, so, like, I don't know how much he was filming. Okay, well, you it know what? It might have been a lot. What's really cool is we were allowed to film in every store we went into. Uh, we were allowed to film in a lot of the stories we went into. So we were allowed to film in the most interesting story we went into. So the filming is going to be really complete, which is really cool. And I have finally caved. I have finally caved to Ed. And we will be doing longer episodes. So the plan yeah. right now is to have half an hour to 45 minute episodes. Uh, that needs to go into inventory. Uh, half an hour to 45 minute episodes and we are going to limit it to the plan is four right now. So what Ed asked for is a full two weeks to go through everything, document the storyline, 
and then figure out what the structure is going to be. So this is going to be like the best one yet. We are actually going full on like reality show length, like good reality show length. It's like an hour long TV episode, about 45 minutes to show you guys as much of the action as possible. So we are de web seriesifying it a little bit and making it making it really more like a TV series. So you guys have been you guys have been asking for that. I was really apprehensive about doing really long form con content on YouTube, but you guys um, you guys won and Ed won and we're going to try it and we're going to see uh, see how it turns out. So um, Dennis is apparently helping me co-host the WAN show now okay. for whatever reason. Okay, yeah. Uh, I was there something that you wanted to share with the audience or my um, my day? Share my day. Share what? <laughs> sure. I can't stop you. <laughs> I've been too busy. I, I don't know. Can't function now. <laughs> I don't know why I got pulled up. <laughs> Suddenly I was editing and looked pulled out me here. Luke, did you, sorry, Luke pulled out? Pulled me out. He never does that. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's really polite. I mean, yeah. Okay, what's going on? Nothing. I've just. Uh, you're supposed to tell us about your day. Oh, okay. I had my day. I don't <laughs> 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 okay. All right, Luke. You can come back. Yes, please save me. I can't. I can't. I'm. I'm a so failure. <laughs> I get it. Dennis's brain is kind of fried today. He's had a pretty stressful day. We shot four fast as possibles today. Uh, we had some challenges with ingesting the footage. Um, he, he definitely had his day. That is a true statement. That's a factual statement. Um, so let's get into the Android N is details and developer preview. I'm sorry? Is the YouTube video up? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. viewership's just really low today. Not right. really sure why. And maybe it's the jacket. I like it, but you know. Actually, you were getting, no, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You were getting a lot of compliments on the jacket. Okay. Yeah, no, I was just messing with you. <laughs> did you notice how it's LTT orange on the inside? I did not notice that, but it is actually pretty close. It's like really close. It's, it's a just little glossy. bit, yeah, hold on a second, cause not, um, well, I don't know if I have anything else. That's really dark. Yeah, and ours is a little down. darker. I think this is pretty right. Um, this one, this one's pretty right. So it, we do have a bit of a darker orange. It is a bit more of a vibrant orange. This is really nice, though. I, I was like I was telling them that already. What is it? NASA it's gray uh, jacket the or some nonsense? It's Society. It's from Alpha. Feel the zipper. Which one? The one on the jacket or the uh, other one? I think we all know I'm not interested in uh, the zipper so much as what's under it. It's kind of nice. Yeah, it's like really nicely constructed. It looks good. I like it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's from, from people that are wondering, it's from the light sail project that Bill Nye was heading out. Yeah. So, anyways, we've talked about that before, don't worry about it. Um, alright, so, uh, this was originally posted by Asim1999 on the forum, do you have the link there? Uh, uh, use the Lifehacker one. So, Google releases Android N details and developer preview and all that good stuff. You know, the, really, the funny thing about this to me, um, is that... Android M, it feels like never really reached ubiquity the way that Lollipop did before it. Not even close. Like I've got a handful of Android devices of which I, I don't know if I'm running Android M on any of them. I think the Nvidia Shield tablet I'm almost might be running Marshmallow. My phone is not. Yeah, no, my Z5 Compact is not running Marshmallow yet, to my knowledge. I did see a software update not that long ago, but I'm pretty sure it was just another Lollipop tweak. Like, I don't think it was actually, it was actually Android M. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check right now. No, yeah, if I'm running 5.1.1. Yeah, well, you've, that's a Nexus device, isn't it? Oh, that's a G4. So G4, so some of the, some of the like, flagship phones have got it. I know that the Galaxy S6 is running it. Um, Nexus devices have it, but it never, really, it never really took off the way that some of the previous ones did. I mean, KitKat, yeah, Lollipop. Um, so it's, I don't know, very, very interesting to me. And it didn't even have the uh, life window. Like, it wasn't even around that no, long. No, no, really. I, well, I don't know, maybe. Maybe I just didn't really notice. I don't, I don't it took think so it long to roll out. Like, um, okay. 
release yeah, now I have to look of, it up. Release date of Android M, yeah. I'm going to search for the announcement. Uh, so Android M was announced uh, May 28th, 2015, so not even a year ago. Yeah. And then it really didn't start rolling out until a little bit after that. So it was yeah. late May. So it was probably like June, July by the time it was really even rolling out on devices. I mean, that's only like a nine-month window. It was pretty small. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it's got a... Bu oh, sorry. I'm uh, still screen sharing here. There we go. So it's got a bunch of new features. Uh, this one's cool. So it's got a data saver feature, which allows the operating system to tell applications proactively. Um, and it sounds like it's configurable, though I don't have all the details about all these, all these little things just yet. But it sounds like it's configurable. You can be like, uh, yo, when I'm close to my data limit, make sure that you're telling my video streaming applications to default to the lowest bit rate. Um, or cool. you know, tell them not to use background data or... Um My favorite stuff is not even related to that necessarily. It's the notification tray updates. So there's a few different things. They're uh, much more interact... Like the, the, the main thing that they seem to be doing, which was pulled out by Marcus Brownlee, is that they're using the screen real estate more. He brings mm -hmm. that up a ton in his video about it, which is actually a very good video about it if you want to check it out. Um, and they use the screen real estate in the settings by, if you see like the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth setting, instead of just saying Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it will say like Wi-Fi and then in small text under that, what one you're currently connected to. And Bluetooth and then what one you're currently connected to. Or when you look at battery, instead of it just saying battery, it'll tell you the battery percentage, what you're currently at, which is nice. And it's similar for notifications. So you pull it down and then instead of just saying like... They can't see your phone, but... You know. No, I know. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this so that I remember where things uh, were. Okay. Yeah. And pulling it down, instead of being able to see like maybe one message or being able to pull it out and see like a little bit of one message, you can pull it out even more. The expansion area is much bigger. You can intera interact with individual ones. So if you That's pull out your really email, cool. you can yeah. archive uh, immediately within notifications individual emails instead of the entire notification. So you can open it up, be like, yeah, that's a junk mail, but I do need to read those later and don't want to forget about it, so I want to leave the notification. You can do that, which is nice. I really wish the default wasn't archive, and I wish you could change I it. I, me too. I do not want to archive my junk mail. I don't give a I crap. actually pay for my Gmail account. I actually like will have to buy capacity for it when I run out. I'm not archiving things. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, and I have this exact same frustration. <laughs> um, and, and then like for Hangouts and stuff, you can drag it down even a little bit more and then reply in your notification drop down without actually pulling away from anything. So if you get like the short drop down that comes in, yeah. you can click reply, reply there without opening the big app, which is very nice. Um, they added a lot of just like usability tweaks for notifications, which was really good. Oh, apparently the camera was flickering a little bit. That's weird. I saw I saw it black out once. Very very strange. Uh, we're not dropping any frames in the stream though. Not not a whole lot I can do about it right now. Sorry guys. Sorry. Um, so it's got a multi window mode. Um, direct reply notification sounds cool. I I don't know anything about this, but I hope that whatever's coming for Android Wear does a way better job of synchronizing um, items that you've read, items that you've swiped away, items you've replied to. Like one of my biggest frustrations with my smartwatch right now is when I get a Hangouts or an email or something and um, I, I, I go, okay, yeah, I'm gonna reply by text, blah, 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 et cetera, here's your reply. That freaking message is still unread on my phone and it's oh. still unread on my computer. I've replied to it. Please synchronize this stuff a little bit better. So that's been, that's been a bit of an ongoing frustration for me. I saw another flicker. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I don't know how much we're gonna be able to do about it. Like I can run out and try and like tweak the connections, but um, the built-in file manager is a lot more powerful now. You can block phone numbers at the system level. That is really, really good. As someone whose phone number has leaked a wide variety of times, um, I am pretty much limited to Android phone makers who have a phone number block feature. To, to not be able you to... You can get an app. You, can't, you can get an app, but it doesn't necessarily work 100%. Mm. Um, so yeah, having, having that handled at the Android level is definitely a huge thumbs up. Like that shouldn't be an optional feature. Like telemarketers or whoever else, anyone who's calling you and shouldn't be calling you, it should be as simple as never hear from this number again. Boom, done. Yeah. Uh, night mode is back, moves to a darker theme that you can turn on and off. Nice, uh, I'll put that on and leave it on permanently. No more optimizing apps every time you update. Um, yeah, 
I you, like night modes for things. Like like the forums, like uh, dark skin or night skin or whatever you want to call it, night night theme. Um, my favorite. They run dark black night theme on everything. This will be a good one for you. You can set do not disturb to automatically end when an alarm goes off. <laughs> No, that's too, too little too late, though. You've got a video <laughs> coming about that, right? Uh, I'm waiting on a product that will be a long time. It's not just waiting oh. for shipment. It's like waiting to finish development, blah, 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 blah. Oh. So it, it's coming, but don't wait for it. But I'm going to do, like, the ultimate alarm setup. And one of the alarms might be swapped out because it's not as good as something else that oh, I found online. I see. Like, it's still, I'm working on it. The first piece is definitely what will be in the video. Right. The second piece could work in the video, but I might try to get a better one. And then the third, third piece still has to show up, and it's being developed. Here's something I'd like to know. Because, I mean, um, hold on. Like, how, how married to computer technology are you guys? Um, like, would you, would you want to see a standalone review of, like, a high-tech alarm clock? And, like, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lead you guys into an answer. I want you, I want to straight up know what you guys think. Because it is no secret at this point that... There's not a lot of computer stuff coming out. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed or not. But, like, okay, there's the Dell XPS 13, Dell XPS 15. Like, those are some pretty cool laptops. Um, there's some high-powered gaming laptops out there. Like, you know, Sager is usually good for a new laptop, a new high-powered laptop design once a year or so. Um, Asus has some cool stuff coming around Computex, but that, that only really happens like once a year when Intel updates their microarchitecture. CPUs are happening barely once a year. If or Is it even once a year anymore? Not really. Not really once a year. Graphics cards are happening once every 18 months or so. Like, go back and look. When the GTX 980 came out, it was a freaking long time ago. Um, I can review my crazy alarm clock thing. I don't like, know. Like, I was just wondering. Like The nose are pretty high. Because there's a, there's a lot of technology that's not necessarily a computer. And well, that's why I wanted to do my fastest possible on the sous vide cooker. Yeah, and you won that battle. And I would still definitely review the sous vide cooker. It's, uh, I bought one, so like when it shows up, I can use it for a while and then make a video about it. Okay. I'm use it anyways. So like. Let's let's do that. I, I want to know... Uh, the, the, the thing that helps me get by with stuff like the sous vide cooker specifically is that uh, Gabe Newell is one of the like backers of it. So I can just like, anytime anyone's like, this isn't computer focused, I just say his name and flop his name around and then everyone's suddenly more okay with it, <laughs> which is super helpful. <laughs> just going to put that out there. You know that's cheating. It kind of is. <laughs> All right, I want to know who wants to see a sous vide cooker review. Okay. See, so that's better than alarm clock. That's better than alarm clock. Because I think the that. problem is... Sure. Inventory. Wait. Uh, no, just put it back in my area. Don't sign it back in. Okay. Um, We've got I, a I, warehouse helper now. I think that he's kind of awesome. Yay. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thumbs up. Yeah. And a foot. Um, anyways. So I think something that helps the sous vide cooker is yeah. m the majority of people can probably get by with just a phone alarm clock. And probably don't care. And then there's I would people argue, that sleep like mountains, like myself. I would argue that a high percentage of our audience, compared to the general population, would benefit from a stronger alarm clock. <laughs> and I mean, I know these are generalizations, but they're not particularly harmful or particularly likely to be inaccurate ones. Gamers stay up later, I would say, yeah. than the general population. Yeah. I mean, you look at how, you look at, I mean, it's not like I've never pulled an all-nighter gaming. You know how many other people are up with me? I'm working on planning one right Lots. now. Lots. You know how much time, I mean, us West Coast people up at, you know, 12 you or 1. You can find full servers at 3 a.m. pretty easily. On the East Coast, so I'm kind of going, you either got up at 5.20, <laughs> had a shower, had your breakfast, and sat down in front of your computer, or you're still up. Yeah. Um, so, and when you tend to stay up late, you tend to be a little bit more difficult to wake up in the morning. I would make the argument that the gamer, the like the gamer grade alarm clock, if you call it that, 
If you call the video Gamer Grade Alarm Clock, question mark, question mark, <laughs> is it worth it? Whoa! Top five Gamer Grade Alarm Holy Clocks. Holy shit. Which is basically what you were planning to make. But basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I was going to do like the three, three stage because they're, they're each good, but for different Oh, yeah, reasons. no, I know. But well, don't, 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 don't ruin it too much. Yeah. But it, it'll be a good video. It'll be a good yeah. video. The one he's planning to make will be good. I was just curious to see what, uh, what you guys thought of like alarm clock coverage But what's or cool else. about the sous vide cooker is like different use cases that I want to apply for it. So hopefully people click on the video before they judge it. But so like cleaning um, socks, for example. <laughs> um, you can set it through your uh, network. So if you like VP, and it's actually, the heat that it produces is lower than boiling. Right. So if you like set it before you get home, you can have a like partially prepared meal before you get home. Or uh, you could set up a task scheduler on your computer mm -hmm. and make it so that like, oh, you have freshly cooked salmon or chicken or soup or whatever you want for when you wake up in the morning, it goes along with your alarm clock. Right. Or like if you're gaming, you just put something in a Ziploc bag, drop it in there, clip it, leave for an hour and a half and play games, come back and like, oh wow, dinner's ready and everything's done for me. Like uh, uh, there's use cases that I think people might not immediately realize. It's a way to get really good food when you don't know how to make really good food, which mm -hmm. is like awesome. The so reason why I wanted to buy it is I'm really good at cooking chicken, but absolutely worthless at cooking fish. And I wanted to be able to cook fish, so I was like, this thing can solve my problem. Yeah, you're like the chicken master. Basically. It's actually kind of remarkable. <laughs> I, I've hardly, I hardly saw him eat anything but chicken for like probably <laughs> a span of a year. It was like the same pack of chicken yeah. from Costco. And every once in a while, I would end up eating it because I'd be like really hungry or he'd like make too much. And then it turns out someone didn't come over or whatever. And I'd be like, yeah, this is good. This is some good chicken. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand why you don't want a little bit more variety in your life. But, but that's fine. This is, this is some good chicken. I'll give you that. It's cheaper to buy an entire trough of chicken at a time. And then if you buy two, you just freeze uh, one and more than three quarters. And then you take two pieces of chicken and put them in the fridge and you put them in the top left hand shelf. And then every single time that you take one, you take the one that's on the left hand side, move the one that's on the right over one position, take one from the freezer, put it onto the right hand side, and then you just keep churning through. So what's really funny about the system you're describing is it's actually very similar to how people who feed their dogs and cats raw <laughs> diet um, handle it. So you have a deep freeze that has your, so you have a weekly delivery of raw diet, yeah. so, and it's individually portioned, okay? So you put that in the deep freeze. That's exactly what you have I mean. a fridge next to the deep freeze, you yeah. pull that one out, that one's for the next day, you take what's out of the deep freeze and you prepare it on a daily basis. So basically you're saying, yeah, I came up with this great system, pet food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, that's actually pretty much it, yeah. It's, so, it's, it's effective, it's, it's efficient, it's, it's cheap, it's economical, I guess I should say. Economical. Gotta keep going yeah. with the E words. Yeah, Mr. Marketing, marketing <laughs> major over here. Um, yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to take like four seconds and I'm going to just double check these connections here because they yeah. should be fine. I didn't touch them, but I mean, yeah. that's the way it is with the LAN streaming PC. It doesn't matter how little you touch it, it just is a bit of a flathead. Maybe it just wants you to touch it some more. Yeah, maybe it just wants a. Wants a Friendly little massage there or whatever. Um, all right. So what so are we? So Gear VR. Yeah, this is cool. Um, Gear VR is going to be used on roller coasters at Six Flags in the States, which is pretty crazy. So they're going to do crazy stuff like that. Which is cool. So you could you could maybe go. What could be interesting about this is. There's a couple of different ways they could do it. One of them could be that, okay, this whole ride is now the jet fighter roller coaster. Yep. Or it could be that you're on the jet fighter roller coaster and your buddy beside you is on the jungle theme fun park roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, this is... you don't necessarily have to do the same one. This is, this is really interesting to me because this sort of sits in between. It looks like Descent. Level grab, like or like Half Life Two. I Half Life Two. I'm thinking that that's closer to Half Life One than it is Probably. to Two. Yeah. Like, um, wow, that's bad. What's really interesting about this? Remember, it's running on like a phone. And you have to tap this. Like, okay, when I first, I'm, I'll, I'll, 
I'll give me a minute. I'll let you get Look there. at that lightning. God, it's bad. When I first <laughs> saw this, what I was thinking was, why didn't you oh, like try great. to uh, embed computers and use an Oculus or a Vive? And I'm not just saying that because I'm a computer Lot PC fanboy. I know, but you're going to have to cycle out and charge phones. And then like the amount of problems you're going to have with the phones is going to be insane. Yeah, that's potentially and valid. And you could, you could remotely yeah. manage yeah. the computers, and then it would be a lot easier to have, like, just an IT staff making sure the computers are okay than it would be to have, like, cycled out phones This is a low-hanging fruit, though. It is a low-hanging fruit. It yeah. also looks like ass. It and you does. have to use a controller up here. If you use a PC, you could, like, integrate a controller into the handlebars. Yeah, you could. Again, you a lot have, of work. Right, I mean, you got to... so much better. Hey, hey. I mean, you got to power... You have to power... Your roller coaster cars at that yeah, point. Yeah, I know. So that's a big issue. Yeah. Um, what's really? I was trying to think of like delivering power through the rails or something, but then that might be a safety issue. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, this is really cool. Like this to me, it, I know it's VR. It's VR because it's completely immersive. You want AR? But to me, this sort of almost sits between what I would consider to be. Like, like VR and AR, if the idea is that the VR experience is, is going to be tied so closely to the rails that you're actually flying along and the wind that is actually coming out of your funny, face. kind of funny because if you're in a jet fighter, you're not going to feel the wind. So... <laughs> I think it's really, yeah, like it's, it's, it's actually, yeah, see, I've got, people are already debating it in Twitch chat. It is VR. It, is, it, it, it falls within VR. It is very but, definitely VR. But it sits closer to the, to closer to the edge where, where it might be closer to AR than, than just pure VR where you're sitting well, in a channel like, thing simulated. Well, like, technically, all of them are a form of AR. Yes. So, like, it depends on how exact you want to be with the terminology. But how most people say it when they're in conversational tones is yes. that virtual reality is with a screen completely covering your eyes and with no visual input of the outside. Yes. And augmented reality is placing images on top of what you're seeing out there. That's not really 100% how it works. And this potentially sits between because using something like the camera on the phone or whatever else, as, as technology like this develops, I can definitely see it sitting somewhere in between where you might have, you might have elements that are captured by the camera and motion tracked or whatever else that are injected into the virtual mm -hmm. reality experience. So yeah. really cool, lots of potential. It looks a little bit weird right now, but... It looks a little bit crap. Yeah, it looks a little bit... Okay, well, I was trying to be nice, okay? <laughs> it looks kind of rubbish right now, but... Very cool theory, though. They need more power, and I'm a little bit... Yeah. I understand that it's way easier to use the phones because there requires no change to the actual ride at all. Yep. So they just have to figure out implementations for the phones. But yep. like, and they just have to... Like, they could almost... You could almost just, like, kind of time it. Yeah. Because yeah, roller coaster is gonna be gonna be predictable to yeah. within like a pretty small margin. Yeah, it won't be exactly identical every yeah. time, but it'll be a small enough margin that it won't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just really wish there was more power behind them, and whatever that ends up being, five Oculus doesn't matter. But I think one of those deserved to be in that position, and I think one of those eventually will be. I think having a phone powering it isn't really enough. At the same time, the like cheap tricks kind of style of amusement park rides might actually be okay for phones. Oh. I just hope that it's good enough that people are interested in VR and then want to pursue it after they have that experience. Yep. And I hope it's not bad enough that people are like, well, that was kind of trash. I just want to do the normal roller coaster. Because if that happens, then they might not be interested in VR. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a long time for VR, VR acceptance oh, yeah. to... Uh to, to really take off. I don't mind it taking a long time. I just don't want anything to negatively impact it. Right. Yeah. All right. So uh, here we go. This is an interesting article posted by C Girl on the forum. And this is looking pretty unfortunate. Uh, France to punish companies for refusing to decrypt devices. Now, to be clear, this has not passed into law yet. But this comes on the heels of France tightening up Got some people saying there's an echo. Um, hmm, that's very strange. 
<laughs> okay, well, there shouldn't be an echo now at any rate. Um, so this comes, uh, this comes on the heels of France tightening up, um, well, really a lot of the anonymity and encryption laws. So they've recently looked into banning the anonymous network Tor and blocking Wi-Fi during special situations. They have um, the lit. Hold on a second. Go, you go ahead. Make your make your way through this one because I need to figure out what's going on. Um, this is like one of the few that I didn't read a ton. The latest step in security push was accepting an amendment to a bill that would make companies like Apple, who are actively fighting the FBI or modifying their software, to break an iPhone. We talked about that uh, not even that long ago. So to break like, into an iPhone. With, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, with Mr. McAfee saying that, like, oh, I'll do it in a weekend or whatever it was that he said, and then coming back on that claim and then coming back on coming back on that claim and whatever the hell happened. Um, but France is looking to be a little bit more aggressive about it. So the potential here is that they might be forced to pay a fine, which doesn't sound super horrible, um, but how many times do they have to pay that fine if they if they don't decrypt one device, is that one, but if they don't decrypt 100,000, do they have to pay the fine 100,000 times? Who knows? Um, or face five years in jail if they refuse. Now, who would face five years in jail? I don't think that's extremely clear, but this isn't exactly a, a thing yet, so that's probably fine. Um, the They're only in the stage of like the bill's first reading so this is pretty early on but maybe people in france should start trying to stop this from happening uh i would hate to see this be the beginning of terribleness echo? There, there was no echo yeah and i didn't change anything i think people started to troll because a whole bunch of people were also saying there is no echo ah it could have also been a twitch issue <laughs> or that yeah. i mean let's uh Let's let's face it. That's not a, not a completely an impossibility. <laughs> True. So, oh wait, I still have the. Oh crap! I forgot to change back to. Another All right. Side so effect anyway, of this might be that companies might not be super happy about doing any amount of business in France because if jail time and fines are hanging over their heads if they don't like sacrifice their customers privacy that might be an issue yeah um, I could see just pulling out of France entirely I mean and, and the thing is like uh, who was it that said this was it Apple or someone else uh, who was basically like you're if, leaning away from the sorry <laughs> if, if we made this software uh, or we made this version of an operating system that decrypted everything uh, you would be able to use that on more than just one phone. So that's scary too, because if France holds this above people like Apple, and then Apple does make that version of the operating system that could easily go to uh, someone else, like the States or whatever other country, because they kind of work together and stuff. Not fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the issue is with that, um, with the capture card. I'm sorry, guys, there is nothing I can do about that other than stopping the stream, diagnosing it, which will be is very difficult because it's very, no, th there's no echo. Um, the flicker, there's really nothing I can do uh, about it, though. Yes. Um, speaking of uh, flickering, da -da -da -da, we've got our sponsors. Squarespace is the place to go if you feel like you should build a website one that is designed for people who want to learn about you or learn about the company that you run or the product you make and whether you want to you know just simplify your life a little bit in terms of managing the website or whether you want to you just keep your website online more often. You should. Consider trying Squarespace because they really do make it easy. They've got 24-7 tech support. It starts at only $8 a month. It features responsive design. So whether you want to run it on your desktop, your laptop, your mobile phone, or whatever the case may be. You should. Try, start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. And by the way, if you do decide to go ahead and buy Squarespace, you should use our offer code, which is Linus, to get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, I just thought about this. Mm -hmm. But Squarespace, if they wanted to make like a um, like thrift version of their product, uh huh. I don't if know. They I don't know do that. what that would be. Maybe it's only like a few potential triangle skins. space. <laughs> No, Line space. Spare space. <laughs> spare space. Because you, you slight, almost screwed up the word and said spare instead of square. But it actually totally would make sense. Spare space. Spare space. It sounds like a cloud storage service. Oh, it totally kind of does. 
Yeah. So, like, if they wanted to make it so that, like, with your Squarespace account, you get a certain amount of storage that goes along with it. Yeah. Like, yo, you, you, get a, you get a website and you get backup for your business. Yeah. They could call it Sparespace. Sparespace. Sparespace.com slash Linus. Don't go there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Um, Tunnel Bear. Tunnel Bear is the easy-to-use VPN app for mobile and desktop. The Tunnel Bear VPN lets you tunnel Spare bear. to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services, whether it's managing your website or whether it's uh, you know uh, doing accounting for your small business, whatever the case may be, as though you're in a different country. They've got easy-to-use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. They also have a Chrome extension. You just select a country in the app, and it actually, like, it really is designed to be so easy my grandma can do it because once it's, it's really in, easy. Once it's installed, it, it, it actually looks like a physical button. Yeah, and, and you just turn the button from on to off or vice versa. Woo! Yay! Yay word. Uh, so your connection gets encrypted at that point and your public IP address gets switched so you show up as if you're coming from somewhere else. And TunnelBear lets you bypass, speaking of being easy to use, all the annoying details that typically come with a VPN for personal use, so port configurations, DNS, or other nonsense like that. They've got a top-rated privacy policy, and they do not log user activity. So you can try out TunnelBear for free with 500 megs of free data with no credit card required over at TunnelBear.com slash when. And yes. uh, speaking of, and say for example, you were doing your you know small business work or whatever else totally anonymously, although I don't really see the point because you're like probably well, uh, hmm. I mean, any benefit to having that encrypted in flight? What? Not really. What? Yeah, what? I don't know. Like your small what? business, you know, receipts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. Because maybe there's a maybe there's a trick to your trade. Like my mom, when she was a dog groomer, would buy a specific type of soap and then mix it with water to because uh, it wasn't actually initially intended for dogs and she would dilute it and then it was actually really good and people really liked it they loved the smell of the dogs when they left the dog grooming shop but that was like her trick of the trade so she didn't want to tell anybody secret sauce so to yes, speak exactly so maybe you don't want people to know your secret sauce or specifically mm -hmm. if you're doing cooking stuff maybe you don't want people to know exactly what's in your I don't know how many dog groomers engage in the kind of corporate espionage who knows that, man uh, who knows it's anyway, a pretty like cutthroat field <laughs> fresh books is the easy to use invoicing software that helps small businesses look professional and get paid faster. So whether we're talking dog grooming business or or plumbing awesome or dogs, you know dance like plumbing, da dance classes or um, yeah. I'm just trying to think of other things your parents have done. Uh, bag making, clothing making. Oh uh, yeah, like knickknack, 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 building and selling. Uh, um, uh, I'm probably missing things. Um, uh, I'm sure uh, 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 buying, buying like discarded stuff and like yep. crafting it into something decorative uh -huh. and and reselling that. So whatever your small business happens to be, <laughs> FreshBooks makes it easy to manage. You can track your expenses, you can create invoices, you can bill customers, you can see that they saw your bill, and they can pay you right through FreshBooks. You can take yeah. deposits, and it's all done through a mobile app that enables you to spend your time running your business instead of doing accounting, which is a total drag. So visit freshbooks.com slash when and enter when in the how did you hear about us section when you sign up for the free trial. Oh, and they just got a mobile card reader. So now you yeah. can take credit cards in person. That should dun, be cool. Da, da, da. Pretty cool. Yay. All right, let's move on to our next topic here. Uh, the Manus VR gloves. This was posted by l 3 ig Will. Uh, if 3 ig Will on the forum. Anyway, whatever. The original article is from Engadget. Use your fingers to play in Vive's world with the Manus VR glove. Goes on sale this year for $250. So have and, you looked at this thing? And my friends, my friends, if you thought that the VR headset was unreasonable and expensive and going to break the bank, let me tell you, friend, let me tell you, friend, that is nothing compared to... All of the accessories. You thought we was bad. Yeah. Just wait, man. Just, just wait. So, so this picture is a little bit misleading. Um, now, if I can point with your mouse. What? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what the crap people are talking about. Okay. Um, 
So I'm going to point with your mouse. So this area right here shows like a little strap thing and then another strap thing. But there's nothing under them, which is why this picture is misleading. If you scroll down and we watch this video and then mute it right away and then jump forward, you'll see that there is stuff under the strap things. And if I pause right here, oh, uh, there, you can see right here there's a big thing coming off of his arm. And right here there's a big thing coming, or is it there? Right here, no, that's his hand. Oh, right here there's a big thing coming off his arm. Those straps are so that you can strap in the entire um, Vive controller. Each one of your back, the tops of your forearms has to have the entire controller uh -huh. strapped to it. So, yeah. Pretty cool. But... I still think it needs to go a little bit further because I don't know about right. having like and and in there it shows the original ones now there's they're actually bigger and have the big ring and all that kind of stuff so they're gonna be even a little bit more cumbersome to have strapped to the back of your wrist and in order to have gloves in VR with this setup at 200 and whatever dollars you still need to use the included controllers they're not a replacement right and they have to be strapped like to your wrist. Like you can't like have them on your hips or anything. At least as far as I can tell. So, yeah. And they show you playing Surgeon Simulator. And he has a few times when he's trying to pick something up. That being said, the controls in Surgeon Simulator aren't like amazing. So right. that might actually be the problem, not the gloves. And another thing that I thought of was I was trying to think about my experience with the touch controller, the Oculus touch controller, and compare it to this. One of my frustrations with the touch controller was especially when you're not holding anything, having the touch controller in your hand is yep. weird. Because you're in the game, you're not holding anything, and you're in real life and you are holding something. And when you go to pick something up, you pick it up with like a couple of your fingers, not all of them, because you still right. have to have the controller in your hands. So that's a little weird, because you're constantly holding this thing that you're not actually holding in the game. These have the opposite problem. When you're not holding anything, they're going to be great because you're not holding anything right? virtually or in reality, and that's awesome. But the second you've got to pick something up, you're now holding an invisible object that doesn't have weight, texture, or feeling at all, and you're swinging a sword and there's nothing in your hand. What was really right. nice about the touch controllers was when I was holding a gun, I was holding something that felt like a handle and pulling a trigger, which was cool, but then they felt really derpy when I was kind of picking something up or not holding something. Right. So they each have their own strength. And yeah, I don't know about that. I think a cool combination would be like a touch style controller that has triggers and whatnot that you could like holster and gloves. Right. So it has like really, really, really good input for your hands, but then you can also hold something. And, and just a game focused around like you always pick stuff up off your holster or whatever. And I'm sure we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait for we're gonna have to wait for something like that because yeah. and I don't want the freaking controller strapped to my wrist because that's ridiculous. Right. So it, it's cool, but I don't know. Chat's hilarious. It's like, what do you guys what do you guys want me to do? You guys troll me half the time. I literally checked. I watched the stream. There was not an echo. So, yeah. So I don't really know what to tell you. And yes, I'm aware of the flicker. As we've said before, we should just ban the word flicker. I know. I know there's a flicker. There's literally nothing I can do. It probably requires like a restart or something. It's probably the uh, capture card being derp or something. <laughs> capture card or the camera, I think. I don't think it's the computer. Yeah, I don't think. No, it's nothing to do with the computer because we're not dropping any frames or anything like yeah. that. So it is what it is. And there you go. On raid? Um, all right, so let's go ahead and yeah, let's move on to our next topic here. Building living, oh. breathing supercomputers. This was posted by Trollion on the forum. Uh, original article here is from McGill.ca. So that's McGill University. Awesome. All right. I didn't notice that. Go McGill. Yeah, dog. Check out those SSD servers in the racks. Mm so sexy discovery opens doors to the creation of biological supercomputers that are about the size of a book pretty freaking cool the substance that provides energy to From all the cells in our source, bodies there is echo when he's screen sharing um for the first 20 seconds and then it stops for the first 20 seconds ish and then it stops 
which makes no sense. No, it doesn't. And isn't really something that I can that I can do anything about. I think part of the problem might be that like I've got this computer muted actually. Thanks, Dirtbreakers. Like you can actually you can actually see. So it's it's something glitching out. You can see in the bottom corner this yeah. is actually muted. It is muted. So there is literally nothing that I am doing here that is a thing. Is it, so is it pulling audio from the platform? It shouldn't be. With that said, it may also be related to the flicker, the flicker. and it is very, very subtle. Yeah. So, life goes on, we are finishing the show. Yes. Um, okay, so what else we've got for, have we got for notes on this one? So, it relies on adenosine triphosphate, ATP, same thing that provides energy to cells in our bodies, and it's an international team of researchers. They published an article on the subject earlier this week in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. So they're describing a model of biological computer that they have made. It's able to process information very quickly and accurately using parallel networks in the same way that large supercomputers do. It's largely a proof of concept. Uh, they've managed to create a very complex network in a very small area, which is sweet. Um, and it's kind of like a first step in showing how a biological supercomputer could work. But it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a proof of concept. It's very cool, but it's not, like, really a thing yet. I don't know what to do about Twitch chat. They're like, you fixed it. I did nothing. <laughs> I, I literally did nothing. Yeah. So I think it's to do with the flicker. I think the camera, I think it's probably, probably. the camera, based on that the flicker seems to be related to the echo. And this camera, like, not even way too long ago, didn't it, like, overheat or something? No, I don't, well, maybe. 50% chance. Yeah. One of them did, but that was, like, once, like, over a year ago, so I don't know. Oh, no, I thought, like, a few months ago it overheated no. or something. Okay. Okay, so this is cool. Uh, you know those, all those videos I've been doing with Unraid, where we've been, like, seven gamers, uh, gaming Naz, um, some of the stuff I've shown off with their, with their dual parody, um, where you, you can have, you can build your array and you can have two parity drives uh, with all the usual benefits of Unraid. Like, for example, um, even if you were to lose three or four drives in a dual parity setup, all the data that's on the remaining drives is actually still there. So there's a lot of really cool stuff about it. They have finally released dun, da, 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 the 6.2 public beta. So all the content that I've done on Unraid has actually been using pre-beta, like pre-release builds of 6.2 beta um, since the very start. So a lot of the stuff that I've shown, I've had people ask me like, oh, where's that feature? Or where's that menu or whatever else? It is finally available. So if you guys want to try it out, then that is the time to do it. People keep telling us to turn off the mic. To my knowledge, you cannot turn off the mic on the Blackmagic Cinema camera. Thank you for the suggestion. We're done with that conversation now. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. They increased the device limits for the trial, which is pretty cool. So you're no cool. longer limited. Because like, that's one of the things. I, I even told them, I was like, why would you have a three device or five device limit or whatever it is on your trial? Because if I'm running a trial of the software, I, I want to know if it works. And if I have eight drives, then I need to know if eight drives is going to work OK. Um, so they increased that. They added dual parity support. It now has a GUI boot mode. So it doesn't only boot to command line. So you can actually sit in front of that computer and access the web browser and the web GUI without necessarily navigating to it over the network. Makes it much easier to diagnose something like a bad network card. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or if Unraid grabs one of your NICs and not the other one and you're trying to find it by host name, that doesn't know. It's not always the most reliable thing. So that's really nice. Uh, they've made some improvements to Docker. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, Docker's not unique to Unraid, but it allows you to run, um, run these, these Docker applications within walled gardens within your operating system so they can't really brick anything else. It's better than the old plugin system. Um, major upgrades to VMs, that's like half of the release notes, and general storage performance improvements, not to mention that it now, I don't know if they've actually got this in the release notes. No, it's not in the release notes, but it has NVMe support. Oh, nice. So I will be donking around with that, um, and that will be pretty freaking cool. I'm excited. Um, what else we got? Oh, OK. Well, this is good. Uh, One World Computing, OWC, stupid. has finally released an SSD. No, this is, this is a thing. Um, when I was, I was trying to upgrade an SSD in some, in some Apple thing at some point, and I was blown away by like the fact that you just 
couldn't get an SSD. So there's finally an upgrade for MacBook Pro and MacBook Air PCI Express SSDs that doesn't cost as much as a laptop. That's ridiculous. Um, so it's three forty seven ninety nine for the four hundred and eighty gig drive and five ninety seven ninety nine for the nine sixty gig drive, which is still very expensive and doesn't include everything that's included in the upgrade kit. Um, but now you can actually get capacities that look like they're greater than what it can be configured with from Apple. So the MacBook Air can be configured with up to 512 gigs. Now you can have 960 gigs in a MacBook Air. If you want a MacBook Air, that's worth like $3,500 by that point, $3,000. <laughs> I don't know. The Canadian rupee has made it very difficult for me to, uh, for me to deal <sighs> with, with pricing with anything. stuff. Yeah, with anything. God, really. like living is really expensive right now. Yeah, everything has gotten more expensive. Fresh fruit, uh, whatever else the case may be. Yeah, fresh is. fruit is like. I love people's theories. It's his phone he headset, which is plugged in. <laughs> it's like basically undoubtedly the camera. Yeah, I think it's the camera resetting, and it's probably turning the mic on and or off or glitching it out or something like. And like I I've, I've gotten, is. I've got a couple guys from my stream that are messaging me, yep. and like apparently, um, the the camera will start losing focus right before it goes black, and then yep. there's audio issues close to that. So like it's all, we're we're getting it down, but like don't worry about it for this stream. We'll yep. figure it out later. There's something going on with the camera itself. So this is pretty crazy. This was posted by Aluminum Tech on the Thanks, forum. Thanks, Tech. Sorry. I just said thanks to one of the guys. Oh, okay. Uh, Aluminum Tech on the forum. OnePlus apparently paid $300,000 yeah. to get their phones into House of Cards. Wow. I mean, I knew that product placement deals were worth a lot of money. We've never gotten a deal. Like, I, I don't actually product, done placement? product placement. We've done a couple things. So we've done um, using laptops on WAN show. Okay. Um, we've done. But that also had a banner. Like. Yeah, it, but it also had a banner. I don't. I don't think we've ever done a just a pure product placement deal. Like every product placement deal we've done has also been a very blatant sponsorship at the same time. As that's far as true. I know. Actually, because like dbrand for Scrap yeah. Wars yep. was. Very clear. There was dbrand integration. This episode in of Scrapyard Wars brought to you by dbrand. And we happen to be using yeah. dbrand stuff. Like yes. It, like it, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I knew on some level that <laughs> product placement was big business. I had no idea it could be worth like well deep into six figures. That is freaking incredible. You know what kind of? Although, like, if you look at the Jurassic Park. Did, did you watch Jurassic Park or Jurassic World? I never did. I one? need to see it. Oh, man. There's some, like, that's some of the most blatant. Worse than Transformers? I don't really watch Transformers. Did you see the first one, even? I think it, I remember, I've, I've seen the first one, and I think I remember being surprised by the stuff in the first one. But, like, Jurassic World was probably the most aggressive brand integration I've ever seen. Did you see... Uh, like buildings named after companies like everything. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Did you see Hotel Transylvania 2? No. Oh, okay. The, uh, the Sony Xperia phone product placement is kind of hilarious. Do they like make it funny or... It, it was pretty well done. Okay. Like... Uh, That's cool. Dracula does not know how to use phone. Yeah, ha, yeah, ha, yeah. Ha. Like, yeah. Like, they, they, they do an okay job Like, that's it. cool. The, the Jurassic World stuff was like... Like, I think if I remember correctly, it was, it was Mercedes is one of their sponsors. And, like, one time, like, a Mercedes car is, like, bursting through something and, like, everything's dirty and exploding, but you can see the logo, like, nice and shiny right in the middle. Like, it, like it's, it's pretty rough. Right. Like, here, let me see if there's, there's probably... I, I remember, like, constantly throughout the whole movie, I was just like, wow. Yeah. yeah, it looks like Mercedes. So they're not the only Chinese company to put product placements in U.S. TV shows and movies. Uh, Oppo partnered with America's Next Top Model last year. Uh, Vivo Electronics put the X5 Pro in The Martian. But the thing that really baffles me about OnePlus doing this is that I thought OnePlus's whole shtick... Oh, wow, that's awful. <laughs> um, I thought OnePlus's whole shtick was 
We save money on marketing and PR costs and pass that to the user. I thought that was the whole point. Interesting. Wasn't it supposed to be like, oh, we run really lean so that we can provide you with the best phone at the lowest price? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious based on the OnePlus 2 that that didn't happen the second time around. Well, now we know why. Because they went, okay, we're only going to get as big as we can get without marketing. Marketing works, whether you like it or not. So that's, that's like... Yeah, I'm willing to bet. Actually, I don't know if I can give them credit for this. I'm not sure they're that organized, but I'm willing to bet that someone somewhere within OnePlus had a had concept a that went, that. okay, you're aggressive loss leader. You gain the mind share amongst the enthusiasts. They recommend it to their friends. Okay, people have heard of OnePlus. That's step one, Re brand recognition. Then you reinforce. You reinforce, you reinforce. You have to actually market and you have to you have to make some margin on the product in order to make that happen. So there you go. That happened. Another thing that happened, this was posted by Command Man 7 on the forum. Original article here is from Kotaku. Yeah. This is a super bummer. Uh, Microsoft cancels Fable Legends, which is like kind of a drag for just just from like a technical standpoint. I mean, Fable Legends was what I was seeing the vast majority of the DirectX 12 yep. demos that didn't look like a pure tech demo yep. done in. Like there was some really cool. It was it was their showpiece for like a really long time. Yeah, I saw some cool DirectX 12 demos that were done in Fable Legends. Um, total bummer. And this is also uh, they mentioned proposed closure of Lionhead Studios, which I mean. You could make the argument Lionhead hasn't done much in the last few years. Um, there's a lot of black and white fans out there. I personally never got into it. I tried really hard to like black and white too. I bought it and I just played it a little bit and I was like, okay. So it's an RTS, but like not quite an RTS. It's like slightly different, okay. Uh, like I never really got it, but I loved Fable 1. Um, never really played much of Fable 2. I loved Fable 1. I think that's a pretty, and that might but that was a long spell time the ending too, is a lot of people when they think about uh, Fable go like, yeah, Fable 1 was a really awesome game. A lot of people love Fable 2. I know, but most people hark back to Fable 1. Fable 1, I really, really enjoyed. Um... Oh, that's funny. I just got a, just got a message just from some random buddy. Uh, OnePlus's phones are invisible in House of Cards. I actually haven't watched. I, I own the first season on, on Blu-ray. Like, I'm super stoked to watch it. Anyway, um, invisible in House of Cards. I actually thought they didn't pay for product placement because I only recognize them because I'm familiar with them. That's something that I will say, the Hotel Transylvania Sony Xperia integration did really well. Like, it didn't bother me because they almost, it almost seemed so blatant that they were just like, you know what, it's Sony Pictures, bro. You don't want to see an Xperia phone, don't come watch a Sony Pictures movie. <laughs> we're desperate, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and like, there can be something to be said for that because if, if you're able to make fun of it in a positive way so that it becomes an actually good part of the story, then cool, good job. Yeah. Winner. Whereas if it's just like, if it's almost so subtle that you only notice if you already have a OnePlus phone, then I don't really understand what the point is. Yeah. Um, rumor. Because I was actually oh, going to say, I, I, I know you jumped on the like, oh, they were supposed to not spend anything, blah, 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 blah. I think 300 grand to get in House of Cards might not even be that much. But it might have cost a lot more to get it actually be noticeable. That's what I mean. Like, <laughs> like I bet you Mercedes or I, th in I, Jurassic think was, I think it was Mercedes and Samsung. I think Mercedes and Samsung for, for Jurassic World probably spent way more. Because I remember throughout right. the whole movie it was like, wow, that is Mercedes. And it is all over the screen. And right. wow, that is a Samsung phone. And they're making it very clear that that is a Samsung phone. I think it was Samsung. Whatever phone they used. <laughs> Apparently it didn't work on you then. Well, I watched the movie a long time ago. Whatever phone. Well, it couldn't have been that long ago. It came out like months, not years ago. How long ago did Jurassic World come out? Sometimes I wonder what your concept of time is. It's bad. Is like, yeah, I know. It's really bad. Um, I've got a, yeah, June. 
That was a while ago. It was like nine months. Yeah, nine months is quite a while ago. So, like, what human to gestation remember what period phone. is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Luke cannot remember anything. <laughs> so, by the time you know his, I remember that by the, the time his theoretical <laughs> wife would have a theoretical child, he wouldn't remember having had sex. Wow. Okay, that's a little aggressive. I remember that it happened. And, oh, that's not going to get better. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that was a close call there. <laughs> uh, yes, it was Samsung. So I was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they called it like the Samsung Innovation Center. And like there was a lot of other. <laughs> like, yeah, like it was really bad. Okay. I really want to watch it still. <laughs> um, all right. So new news. Our original article here is yeah, from our. Like, this happens. So everyone starts recording it on their phones. Oh, wow. That are like, like it was really bad. So our buddies over at PC Perspective, rumor, NVIDIA's next GPU called, is that a multi-fan cooler? I don't know what's going on. Maybe not, not necessarily, that just might be a new bezel stuff. Next GPU called GTX 1080 uses GDDR5X. Hmm. So GDDR5X is that slightly faster GDDR5. But not. Uh... But not HBM2. Yeah. So what this means to me, so the card, oh, so, so here we go, here's the rumor. So the rumor source comes from Bench Life, and the report claims it will be called the GTX 1080U Core with eight gigs of, what, so called either the, wait, what? Uh, oh, I think this is just a typo. I 1080 think so. 1080 or 1800 or something is what the name's, but okay, whatever. Anyway, it apparently will have eight gigs of GDDR5X and not HBM2. Um, using, we'll launch on May 27th, uh, we'll feature a GP104 Pascal GPU, um, blah, 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 one 8-pin connector, one DVI, one HDMI, two display port. that's a weird one, and, why is that so weird? The first, so, so basically what's happening here is the cycle will continue, this is, this is the takeaway. So if you were hoping that the GTX 1080 or whatever they end up calling it was going to be the savior of high-end VR gamers and, uh, you know, people who want a legitimate upgrade from the GTX 980 tie, don't expect that. It might be a small upgrade, much like we've seen with the GTX, um, what did they launch first in 700 series? Whoa. Whoa. What, did they launch the 770 first? I can't remember the seven. The 780 is significantly worse than the 780 Ti, or no? Or they're close? No, no. 780 is big, big Kepler. But I think so. Crap! Yeah, I can't I remember. Think it is. I think it is. Yeah, because six right, because 680 is Kepler architecture as well. Okay, I'm I'm getting it all sorted out in my head. So what we're seeing again is the step down GPU being marketed as a flagship and we're just gonna have to wait until significantly later when whether it's a Titan or whether it's a Thai card or whether it's a, a 1090 or whatever they end up branding it. Someone's very mad at you for calling it Thai. It, that's legitimate. Very specifically saying that you have to say TI. No, it's actually not. Um, Since we're titanium. It stands for titanium. NVIDIA internally calls it TIE. Yes. At every press event, they tell us to call it TIE. I usually refuse to call it TIE because I think it sounds ridiculous. I usually call it TI as well. But that doesn't change the fact that it is correct, much like the way I say ASUS is the correct way to say ASUS, even though I think it should be ASUS. ASUS. <laughs> so I'm sorry, it's TIE. So whatever they end up calling it, we are not getting a legitimate upgrade to the 980 TIE until we get something else. So this is going to be more like the spiritual successor to the 980, which is a small max, like a, well, a medium-sized Maxwell versus a big Maxwell. So that's super a bummer. I'm super disappointed. It makes sense. I mean, HBM2 is not ready yet anyway. Mass production, I don't believe, is even remotely anywhere near started. So it makes perfect sense, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed. It means that running a Titan X like I am, I'm not looking at upgrading for many more months to come. Yeah. You're running 980s in SLI, right? Yes. So you're bone too. Yep. Yeah. 
Because that's the general rule. That's the way that it's always, well, I don't want to say always been in the past because it's, it's not always the case. But, but the general rule was SLI of last high end was pretty darn close to a single one of the new high end. And that fell off, that fell off the board a little bit in the 600, 700 series because they were actually based on the same microarchitecture. Yeah. Um, NVIDIA just kind of unleashed their big, their big GPU and was like, ooh, new flagship, 700 <laughs> series. Um, but they had no choice at the time. We weren't getting any process node shrinks. So now we're getting a process node shrink. So what you're probably looking at is, since this is a direct replacement card, is about the performance of a couple 980s in SLI, assuming non-perfect scaling. It's not going to be twice as fast as a 980. So probably like 140 to 160% as fast. And probably similar in terms of pricing to what the 980 was when it launched. That's my assumption. We should do that video I was talking about. Which one is that? I can't. Oh, okay. Well, I'd, yeah, that doesn't help me then. The, uh... <laughs> you know that thing? We should do that thing. I actually that... thought you might have... Uh... We should do that thing that you uh, were saying we should do. Maybe after one show when the cameras are off. Um, yeah, that's actually not a that's actually not a bad idea. It'd be pretty funny. Um, let's see what else we got here. I don't know. I think that's that's pretty much all I have to say. Maybe we can spare you guys the uh, spare you guys the 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 flickers pretty quick here. So uh, one more, one more, one oh, more. Oh, what do you want to do? The division of is Ubisoft's fastest selling game. Wow. Exact sales numbers not known at this time. The original article here is from GameSpot. That is pretty incredible. Yes, there is one. Um, wow. Set digital sales records across the game's available platforms. And Ubisoft's managing director said that the studio is, <laughs> quote unquote, extremely happy with the division's launch. Just solidifying that all they care about is sales numbers. Huh. That is incredible. How many other games does Ubisoft make that are excessively multiplayer focused? Is it like nothing? Because everything I can really think of has a very strong leading single player element. Yeah, your Assassin's Creed, your Watch Dogs. So your... most things that they yeah. make are not really on a timer in terms of buying it because a lot of multiplayer games, especially like this, which aren't gonna go into a competitive scene in terms of like people watching it, are on somewhat of a timer. Your friends will buy it, play for a while, and stop playing. Yeah. So I think one of the reasons why it is their fastest selling game is everyone's like, are you playing it? Are you playing it? Are you playing it? Yes, okay, let's get it now and then they're gonna play it for a while and then drop right, it. Right, and then get bored. Instead of a single player game where it's like, well, I still wanna finish the sequel, and maybe if I wait until I'm done the sequel, it's gonna be cheaper. And then you mean prequel. Prequel, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, or like I've got, I've got all these games queued up. I still haven't played Just Cause 2. So I didn't buy Just Cause 3. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I really need to play Just Cause 2, I know that, but I really don't want, because it really does, if there's one thing that makes a game feel old, it's playing the sequel first. Yeah. Like, I am oh, going... Yeah. Like, there's very few games where I'm legitimately going to make my son play the old one first, but early Final Fantasies is one of the ones where I'm going to be like, no, I am not... You may not turn on an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4, a, a PlayStation 3, a PlayStation 2, even. <laughs> You may not turn any of those things on until you have played some of the older 2D Final Fantasies. End of story. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I have an idea for a stream that I want to do eventually, but I don't want to say it uh, right now because I don't want someone to steal the idea. But it has to do with like playing, playing prequels first and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for tuning into the WAN show. We're sorry for the technical difficulties. What we'll probably do is just flat out replace that camera for next week and see if that helps. Yeah. Um, it, it is what it is. We've never had that issue before, so it's like that every week. There's yep. always some brand new issue we've never had. I even yep. said to Luke. The computer was good this week. Yeah, I said to Luke when we set up, all I did was fire it up, plug in my laptop, and I was like, wow, this is working perfectly. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. Same Bye. bad time, same bad channel. Doing a game stream tonight. Sick. Nice.